Welcome back to my playthrough of Fable 3. Uh, picking up pretty much right where we left off. I didn't really do much except confirm that can't get weapons yet. So we're going to be doing Mist Peak Valley, all magic use. Okay. Not a big deal. If they wanted me to have weapons, they would have given me weapons. And if the good lord wanted me to die out here, he wouldn't have armed me with a fireball spell. Still a bit chilly, yeah. Something with sleeves might have been nice. So, I will say, listen to your dog. The pitch of your dog's bark will warn you whether there's danger or the treasure or whatever, and he will bark at all sorts of things. So, pay attention when your dog barks and listen to the type of bark. Do -do -do -do. And you will be, you will revisit every single part of this game multiple times um i can't think of anything offhand where you only go there once and you have to clear everything out in that first try that said still nice to explore off to the side and don't just follow the gold trail all the time but for the most part if you follow where you're gonna where you're supposed to go you'll hit all the important things and you're not gonna miss too much by just doing what you're supposed to do and you can go a long way out of your way and find absolutely nothing of value whatsoever which I think is what we're doing right now come to think of it bird can't shoot the bird we did find a silver key chest but we're obviously four keys short of that one slightly different than being a few fries short of a happy meal but hey look, Torgo's already found his first dig spot. Do I have... I do magically have a shovel. Didn't have to buy one. And it must like collapse or fold into a pocket dimension or something because that didn't fit in my pocket. Okay, a uh, little use except as gifts. You can sell them. Oh yeah, the pawnbrokers in this game. I forgot about that. Um... Yeah, I have a silver bowl now. Good job, Torque. And I think that's it here. So, let's run up here. Just to confirm, there's absolutely nothing of interest up here except the chest. See, the game's telling you the same thing I already did. A jet. Seems a bit high tech for this game. Look at that. Look where we are. And most of that valley is explorable. This game is significantly larger, I believe, than either of its predecessors. Obviously, Fable 2 was much bigger than Fable 1, and I believe Fable 3 is another order larger beyond that. Well, what you got, Torg? You also, I don't believe, don't you don't have to level up your dog's digging skills like you did in Fable 2, which wasn't a bad mechanic. It was just really obnoxious to have to re-go over areas you already went through because now you have level 5 dog skills and he'll find dig spots that weren't there the last time you were, ran through an area. So it behooved you to upgrade your dog as fast as possible so that you didn't have to keep going back to places over and over again. Climb. Nope. I did, however, see a wolf down there. So. Oh, yeah. They're going to go ahead and point it out to us, huh? Those are some evil looking wolves. Fortunately, Fireball does perfectly well in blasting wolves. And you don't have to hold down the right trigger to draw XP orbs to you anymore, the guild seals automatically get added as your XP. And again, I don't think there's anything really interesting up here, but last time we got some treasure, so... What do you got, Torg Z? Look, treasure. 
I keep wanting to push the down button from Fable 2. I just finished Fa playing Fable 2 like last night. So the I want to dig instinct is still that left thumb pushing down on the D-pad when I hear turtle bark. Oh, look at, sorry, skeleton. <clears throat> See, like picking up that shovel there and keeping it with me would have been an interesting way of saying, oh, now you've got a shovel. Come on. Yep. Come on. You too. Terrain obviously kind of an issue sometimes. It can get in the way. Yeah, it's just it's a great area and one thing that this game does very well is get, provides a lot of other terrain that you can't get to, but it's just there to be part of the landscape to look at. Uh, so the world feels bigger than what it actually is if you just narrowed it down to the navigable areas. But then there's also things like this where there's lots of twisting and back and forth and over and unders to uh, give you options of places to go and some areas open up before others that sort of thing so it it does a very good job of controlling where you go while also giving you plenty of options for current and later exploration oh what you got Torg? oh treasure aha thank you see good bumper I do appreciate all the chests in this in that we find out here have that guild seal on them. So they've just been sitting there. Did Dad leave these for me, scattered around the the kingdom? Weirdest treasure hunt, you know, imaginable for a father daughter bonding experience, especially since your dad's apparently dead. Posthumous bonding. And not in a necromantic kind of way. Yeah! A health potion! Woohoo! Yeah, so if you pay attention to your dog, you find all sorts of useful things. And we're all ready to Brightwall Village. Ranged kills, 9,000. Yeah, you can tell. I honestly don't know where that sort of lines up, but yeah, if it shows me melee kills and magic kills, that might that number might mean something. This little thing is just begging for, like, bad guys to spawn there and come running down at you, or a special quest dig site or something. Don't think there's anything useful over here yet. Couple of paths. Oh, yeah, see? <clears throat> I do I tend to do most of my introductory exploration in an area on my own, and then later when I'm in sort of cleanup mode. I will go back to the map and go, okay, what did I miss on my first run through of this area to go find all the keys and whatnots. And I may be go I may go several casual run throughs in an area before I ever go back to as a collector. But look at this. Things already pay off. Anybody home? Nope. Anything? Nope. All right. Well, we got a silver key, so definitely worth the diver the uh, little diversion there. Also, I'm sure you know the 
The big, I was about to say the big city, but man, this place looks beat see down. I you're approaching Brightwall, a most um, charming little hamlet. And a perfect opportunity to acquaint yourself with the I'm sure they'll appreciate my dweller garb. Won't treat me like a yokel or anything. And the factory smoke. Of course, a less charitable mind would turn them simpletons. But I encourage you to shop in their stores, drink in their taverns, and otherwise partake in their small town pleasures. Thanks, Jasper. You don't seem classist at all. All right, so pawn shop. Hey, that kid's got some talent. This is where you can sell things. And I buy some weird things as you go. Let's see. This should be a dog. Yeah, I think he has dog things a lot. Hello. You look like a dweller. That makes you going. Need a new blade. I'll just shake your hand. Ooh. Again, very uh, space invasive when we're greeting people. Oh, even the people in this big city know the secret handshake. Yeah, so when you want to buy something, you can just go up and you buy it straight off the thing, which really limits purchasability of things compared to the previous games. This is one mechanic I don't like as much, is that it's either there or it's not. You can buy it. You can't scroll through a list of items and say, well, I want that and that and that and that. You walk up and you go, that is there on the stall, in the, on display, I'll buy it or not. That's it. That's your choices. Wine, some spirits. What else do we have here? Um, he looked drunk. This is a bar. This is the bar. Hello, Rachel, the barmaid. I'll shake your hand. What was that noise? <laughs> so you earn guild seals just by greeting people and shaking hands and doing stuff, raising your connection with them. So it really does behoove you to interact with lots of different people. And especially early on, this is a cheap and easy way to get guild seals and get some XP. I don't know how worth it is in the end, but, you know, I'm not going to sit here and do this forever, don't worry. Hello. I have it very, on various playthroughs, done that a lot in some areas. I don't remember that it really gained me all that much in the long run. Here we have the weapon store. But they're closed. Anybody home? Hello? I know you're sitting right outside. Wobbo the blacksmith. How you doing, mate? Hello? Hello? Nice grip. Yes. <laughs> Secret handshake that everybody in the kingdom knows. You look guardy. I don't believe I get in trouble for opening chests in people's houses and stores. So, down there you can see the mannequins holding the weapons, so the weapons shops as well work the same way. If they've got it, you go buy it by walking up to the one item they have sitting out there and decide whether to buy it or not. So, there's that lower section of town. We're gonna go this way. Let me know if you have trouble finding anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Excuse me, Excuse me, little kid. Excuse me, little kid. Poke around a little bit because I know some of these houses have some stuff behind them. I don't remember, I always remember which ones because I'm not looking at the map yet. But I do know a little bit of exploration pays off. That uh, is a big frog? Yes, that's a frog. Alright. Someone likes their amphibians. 
If you can find better prices anywhere, then I shan't be surprised if you shop there instead. This feels like something might be back here. It feels like I might be wrong. Oh, wait, no, here we go. Ha ha! You know, Torbal, if you increased your range on when you would bark at things. I mean, don't get me wrong, really appreciate it when you do and you alert me to stuff that I would otherwise miss. But, if you could find these things at a distance and lead me to them instead of waiting until I'm already on top of them, be a little nice, you know, just saying. Alright, do we tell me the time of day? This chamber beneath Brightfall sounds intriguing. Oh, wait. I was hoping. I keep forgetting that. I'm again thinking of the Fable 2 uh, menu but system where you can in pop Brightfall. in and see the actual time of day. I forget. Uh, here we go. What's so, dog materials? training exploration. Oh, you can level up the dog. That's right. Oh, that's four costs several times how much money I have right now. Okay, yeah, you can. Okay, you can level up your dogs. My apologies. I forgot that. I knew there was something for your dogs at the stall, but I did not remember that it was expiration things. There's a silver chest key that I probably can't open yet. Oh, here we go. I don't think there's anything down here yet, but oh yes, there they are. Look at them. Look at all the gnomes. Oh, you'll learn to hate the gnomes even more than you may have hated the gargoyles. They're at least as funny, though. Way more insulting. I don't think... Yeah, he won't let us in if we go back here. So, I'm not even going to try. When that when they're ready for that, that will appear as a quest, I believe. So, at the moment, I think we're just going to progress because I think this may lead us to owning weaponry, finally. <clears throat> Man cannot live on fireball alone. Regardless of what Fizban the Fabulous might say. So lots of these bookshelves have little teeny tiny amounts of gold. Which aren't much, but they do tend to add up. So early game. A real visitors. Yes. A real visitor. Hello, I, Samuel. I'm afraid I was speaking the truth. King Logan has closed the academy. I'm little more than a custodian these days. That's okay. Looky what I have. By the oh, oh. Bing! The guild Again, seal. where am I keeping that? I haven't seen it since the old hero King last came here. Oh, then you are the princess. Yes. Oh, my. Yes, see, unlike previous ha um, fables, I almost said halos, unlike previous fa fables, we talk. I'll follow you in a second. Hold up. Forget which of these still have anything in them. No. Yeah, alright, just follow them for now. Reliquary. Alright, a bit more gold there. Nice. Here we are. And again, you will be revisiting this place quite how often. Many of our researchers and professors have studied this door, hoping to unlock its mechanism. But mm -hmm. I knew there was only one thing that would ever open it. Is it my guild seal? It is, in fact, my guild seal since that's about my only possession at this point. I realize the time scale is a little different, but it feels like uh, the beginning of Hogwarts Legacy where there's like the one door that no one can get to that, oh my gosh, the, someone's finally here to open this thing. 
So, yeah, that was like hundreds of years, though, before someone finally showed up. This is a generation at, at best. All right. Do, do, do. I'm going to poke around. We can find lots of stuff in the bookshelves. I will not be reading out all the things that it prompts because some of them are quite long. Just an old bookcase, and some of them are quite boring and pointless. Nothing to see here. Darkness descends on Albion. Okay. Money, money, money. Ooh, that's no good. There are, when you get the further into the game, some books to collect and stock the library. When like this one, I believe. Sword, How to be a master swordsman. Make sure you got the other fellow first. Easy, what? <laughs> and so, if you collect these books uh, on your first visit to a place, you can sometimes save yourself some revisiting. Uh, but they are not necessarily right there where you you just walk up and find them like that one was. And so they are one of the many types of collectibles that are in this game. Um, they really kind of went out of their way to give you lots of stuff to go back and find in different areas. But they all tend to be worth it. I believe, if nothing else, I believe the book collection quest is lots and lots of XP. And on subsequent visits down here, I think this place is crawling with hollow men. In maybe not this exact room, but uh, the deeper you go, the more likely that is to happen. Alright, I'm going to speed this up as I search for things of interest. Oh, Meredith's Sock. That's been brought up quite often in previous fables. Oh, what did I miss? Up, up. Where are we going? What's your deal, Torg? The bookcase, dude. Whatever you found, I imagine we'll get it on the way back. Silver chest. Dog training combat. Excellent. Interact with the dog and press on the D-pad. Okay. Torgle. Torgle. Dog combat. Okay. Sure that he found right off the bat. Okay. Here we go. Need that. I believe this is blocked off. Can we? Yeah, no, can't get there. All right, then things up. This place is quite extensive, and we will be back here several times on further expanding exploration. But for now, it's a relatively straightforward trip, and obviously no dangers whatsoever. Oh, hello, Jasper here again. I believe that amazing device is what is known as a flit switch. However, on the subject of amazing things, you will not believe what I have just found in the sanctuary. Oh, really? You should come back as soon as you possibly can. Is it a sword? This sanctuary can hey, look, weaponry. Within which there are some truly remarkable weapons, heroic weapons, which your father left for you. 
This way. Soldier uniform, a Yule costume. Tattoos. Highlander women's and men's suits. Okay. Let's go check out our arsenal. Now, admittedly, these weapons don't appear particularly impressive yet. However, according to the book, they actually change as you use them, becoming more deadly and developing fantastic properties. Yep. They are living weapons, and the way in which you fight with them determines how they evolve. So... They, by for According starters, book, you get a hammer, can hammer. Grow larger and heavier with use. Incredible. Or Apparently, if your as you play style it, is a sword, the blade actually becomes longer and sharper. Imagine. According to so, the book, slightly more damage, but is a slower attack. With use. I am a sword user first and foremost. So the four dots there, it will explain your you. It will. Add stats and abilities and bonuses and stuff, uh, like he's saying, it grows with use. So, your basic hero sword is That's always a solid option, I believe. It may not be your most powerful thing at any given point, but it's very rarely a bad idea. Well, now that you have a proper weapon, you should return to the chambers underneath Brightwall Academy. You're just going to make me come right back here when it's time to pick a gun. Ah, yes, the flit switch. Now, the way yeah, I know how to do it, Jasper. Is by hitting your new weapon should serve that purpose. Ooh, sparkly ghost lights in the air. We know what that means. It's time for the Hollow Man. Interesting weapons there. Hollow Man. And not the most dangerous of foes. A bit slow at this point. You know, not much in the way of blocking. But, you know, they tend to come in droves. So, ideally, you have a nice AoE spell charge up, and then when they all come running in at you, you just go kerblam. This dig spot you spot from like half a mile away. It's gonna be another dog thing, isn't it, Turtle? Okay, it's money. Alright, you're for good. And it's believed down there is gonna be blocked off or Yeah. In some way inaccessible. Like I said, we'll be back here several times. In going completely different locations. This place is huge. Do, 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 do. Right, keep your nose peeled, Torval. Red flit switches. You shoot them with magic. You didn't figure that out. Let's see. I have yeah, time to pour some. Call them in. Yeah, so, low level AoEs, not really all that useful at this point. Because by the time you got that many guys around you, you're probably going to take some hits.
Okay. Uh, let's see. But directed magic quite useful. I have no other ranged weaponry at the moment. Oh no! I mm, probably should have chose the one that pointed that was a little closer to that treasure chest, huh? Military gloves. What's it gonna be? What's it gonna be? Slow time potion, yes. He's slow time, not a spell in this one, like it has been in previous fables. I mean, I'm not going to get to fight Holloman under those glowing chandelier there. Come on, come on. Maybe later. Hmm, gosh, it's a dead end here. I'm sure there's nothing going to be back there later on. As a hero, you can survive giant freaking jumps down and other death-defying leaps into water and stony bottoms without any fear of taking damage. Like this one! Torgal, anything over here? Torgal, did you come down with me? Torgo! Nothing up there. Oh, here we go, our first dive spot. Nice of the amethyst to create ripples in the water. Okay. There you are. Oh, hello. believe things will happen with your hero sword for instance if you kill a lot of hollow men you'll get a bone handle on it or something like that the, the basket on the hilt will be made out of bone and you'll have more success killing hollow men that sort of thing so it will the sword actually changes its stats and grows based on how you use it and what you use it against I just did the down the d-pad again. Could have taken me a couple of days to unlearn that. Bit of gold. Cool. Good boy, Pupper. Good boy, Torval. Alright, here we go. How about some more hollow men? Doors locked. Ha ha. Do 
door is unlocked now. And... I mean, we can't go wrong. The game won't let us... I don't think. Uh, I don't think I can go in there. I honestly forgot that's how you open that door, but I knew that lighting the torches did something. So, poke around a little more down here. Ah, oh, hey, look, it's where we came in. Looks like a broken wall or something, but I don't think that's a thing in this one. Hey, this looks like the cave we were in before. More bats. Can I kill the bats? No. What do you got, Tor? Where you go? Come on. Come on. Find a spot. No. But just like in table two. If your dog does not signal, there's a dig spot. Or if he gets there and stops signaling, there's a, dead, a dig spot. You can't dig. You have to have his signal and have him digging at the spot before it will let you do it. More sword fighting against the hollow men, probably. Line them up. Line them up. Yuba! Yeah, stabbing the skeleton really doesn't seem like it would do much. The slashing attacks feel like they do far more than stabbing and piercing attacks. Just saying. Bludgeoning damage, you know. There isn't anything back on that little prompt thing sticking out, right? That's okay. Now that's where I came up. All right, we're good. What you got? That's right. Take me off the beaten path, Torg. What are we going? What are we going for? This place looks lovely. Is that it? Was there one over here too? Nope, that's it. Okay. But, hey look. More off the beaten path to check out. I think this is on our way back up. On our way out. Take a quick poke around. Yeah, okay, so now we're back up right above where we were setting off those the platforms earlier, so we're not ready to go back that way yet. Ah, hello. Yes, you'll recall that I mentioned that flit switches require a knock from a melee weapon. Well, well it seems there's that another type. Partially correct. According to the book, only blue switches require melee weapons. The red variety requires magic. Yeah, we figured that one out. Activate yellow switches. You must shoot them with a firearm. Guess what I found here? That your uncle, book your book father's sanctuary. Where some firearms were located, and these weapons, well, 
They must be seen to be believed. Please return to the sanctuary as soon as you can. Oh, that was fast. The in question were also left for you by your father. They are in the armory. The Bloodstone Bludgeon. Unique weapon, legendary like weapon, if you will. And hammer, these astonishing weapons evolve over time as you use them, becoming mm -hmm. ever more fearsome. They can cause more damage and achieve other incredible effects. So, the again, we have more powerful but slower. Enemies at long range. And it will just like just like that, it will grow with you. A lot of times I'm a pistol wielder, but I will. I don't have a set preference, I don't think. It's more about the weapon itself rather than pistol versus rifle in this game most of the time for me. But now we have a third weapon over here. The Bloodstone Bludgeon. Take a peek at that, because now you see all the rest of the weapons you get, I believe, are special ones like this. And... Wielded by an unknown but mighty pirate in the Great Bloodstone Uprising, this hammer has seen things no hammer should see, and done things no hammer should do. So, you have to to level it up and increase the damage and make this a stronger weapon. Each weapon each weapon has its own set of requirements. In this case, you have to decrease your moral standing, and not just once or twice. You have to do it enough to fill up that little red bar and then it will then you earn that achievement for the weapon and you will get plus 16 extra damage which would effectively double the damage on this thing arrogance you must kill five people who love you so you make them love you and then and you have to do it with this hammer i think like i'm, I'm pretty damn sure like 99 percent sure so you have to do it with the hammer you don't just do it generally but then you get plus 30 percent damage versus human enemies and drag eight villagers to work while having this hammer equipped and then you gain money with every hit so some of the abilities that these things have on them are fantastic some of them are meh and they will affect your gameplay based on what you're trying to get um there's a pistol that i absolutely love in this game that requires killing crap tons of hollow men but it also does a bunch of damage to get to them once you get it so uh, I think it's like the Bone Masher or Bone Crusher or something like that. Bone something destructive. And I will be upgrading that one as soon as I can once I find it. And I love that pistol. That's fantastic for all the Hollow Man killing. But this is quite obviously a dark side hammer, if you will. So I will not be using this one. But it is cool the way that each weapon has its own set of upgrade stats and abilities that you want to do. I really like the way they did that for this game. Because rather than just, oh, I found a insert type of metal here, sword, or an axe, or this, and it just increases the stats or whatever, every single weapon is different and has different types of upgrades for you to do to customize your play style. Which is pretty cool. Really slow firing on this, unfortunately. But it'll get there. So, one, two, three, reload. One, two, three, reload. Make sure nobody's creeping up behind me. But, again, it doesn't matter how I'm killing the things. It just matters that I am killing the things, so I don't have to worry about upping my will experience versus my melee experience. Hello. But I don't have aiming or holding down for more damage yet, I don't think that's an option. That'll be a, a, a chest to find later. When I hold it down, it, do, it does vibrate, you can hear it. But I don't know if, how, what that does on damage yet. Can I just get the big one to hit the small one? That's awesome.
Yep, he definitely hit his buddy. Team kill! You team killing bone head. Sorry. I you look different. Oh hello, thanks for the warning tour. Sorry, I watched a lot of red red versus blue when it was uh, new and hot and awesome. Um, kids, not appropriate for you. Uh, but yeah, so I stood team killing don't say the next part. Oh, lots of slow time potions. Cool. If you are older and, mo and mature, and if you like machine animation, if you like Halo, if you just like things that are damn funny, red versus blue. You're welcome. Also, Ruby. I've mentioned that on chat on uh, in games before. Highly recommend. R W B Y. What what you got, Torg? Did... The giant pile of dirt I ran over. Cool. Checking the time. Probably should praise Torgal after he finds stuff. I think that's a mechanic in this game, not the last one, where he is more willing and better able to find things if you praise him for a job well done, um, versus if you tell him off, etc. Then he doesn't do it as well, or he doesn't uh, is less willing to. I forget. I forget what it is. I think there's some difference, and I think it's this game, not Fable 2, that had that mechanic in it. But I try. I did try to praise Fable 2 Tortle when he did good things, but as often as not in that game, I actually ended up scolding him because the stupid D-pad commands, I would go to eat a piece of pie or an apple or something, and right before I pushed the button, and it's because it would prompt me, and like, hey, do you want to eat an apple? And yeah, sure. And I push the button to eat the apple, and it immediately, as I'm about to push the button, shifts over to scold your dog. I was like, I, that is just uncool. He did a good job. He never did anything to make me want to scold him. He was always a good pupper. See a big old thing about to drop on me? Okay. Sorry, I saw that big old glow, glow ball up there start swinging past me. I thought something big was about to drop. That was a nice but extra charged AoE. What do we got? What are we going to find? What are we going to find? Oh. It's Dad's old music box. You have done well. Now, so, now we go back to... There is much you need to know. Level Up Place. Which I may just call the World Between Worlds because I don't have a... I always forget the path to road to whatever it's called. And it's a very Star Wars-y sort of thing here. Road to rule, here. that's what it is. Touching the guild seal was an indication of what you could become. Reaching the music box has proven what you already are. No one but a hero. So let's see. If I appear on the left hand pedestal. And Chances are, then that's light side pedestals. But you have only taken the first step in your journey. Albion is crying out for a revolution, and for someone to lead it, winning supporters to your cause will be hard. Leading them against Logan will be an even greater challenge, but it's one you must accomplish. But my brother is such. This is not a matter of personal vengeance. As long as your brother. All the words that just popped ahead, I can't say, knowing my kids might watch this right now. It will show you the truth. Yes. Oh, I got to hold my acceptance. This is my Albion. Its cities will bow to my law. 
or they will burn. Its mountains well. will bend to my will, or they will fall. This is my Albion. Its people will do as I say, or they will die. Its future will be. I mean, no offense to be your Albion's like a little model. That's the only thing that's going to obey all those rules you're just trying to set down. And nothing will stand in my way. We will be greater, and we will be stronger, no matter what sacrifices we must make. This is my Albion. So you've said? And I will see it destroyed before I surrender it. Some serious eyebrows there, dude. Like the, the muscle under that eyebrow. Part of you still His eyebrows gonna work out. You have your answer. The kingdom will face its own annihilation under your brother's rule. Now, do whatever you must to gain your first ally. For you cannot lead a rebellion without followers. Sabine is a good man. And his people are strong. Yep. My brother is a twit stick. So here we go. We open it. And boom! There's me in my dweller garb. This is the road to rule. No kidding. Mystical path you must journey along on your way to taking the throne and becoming a legendary hero. The guild seals you earn by defeating enemies, engaging with people, and completing quests can be used to unlock the chests on this road. Each chest costs a specific number of seals, so spend them wisely. Unlocking them all is no easy task, but totally what we're going to be doing, by the way. I will be prioritizing, obviously. So, we have melee level 1, so obviously more damage. Skill level 1. Magic level 1. Or we have Shock Spell. Landlord Pack. Yeah, that's the key to getting money. Cool. Obviously, everything here is pretty darn cheap. So, focus first on melee. I maybe shouldn't have done the landlord pack first. Super Soul. Um, let's see, twenty, twenty, and forty. All right, I'll come back for the shock spell later. Gun. Right, and I, I, I do tend to switch back and forth between all three combat modes in this far more than the previous games. In Fable 1, I was all about slow time, multi-strike, and just spam attack and multi-strike, left, right, go, 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 and because it absolutely destroys everything. And once I discovered that, I really stopped playing with most of the other spells. I used charged up fire, fire bolt or you know the inflame uh, for certain AOE effects when I needed it. But for the most part, that was really the only other spell that I did anything with. Um, Fable Two did not have, or it had slow time. But it was, you have to charge it up to, to get use out of it. And I never really liked trying to get that mechanic out of it. And so a quick one-time use slow time just didn't have the same effect as it did in Fable. So I stopped using slow time. There is no multi-strike. And I ended up eventually becoming almost entirely a ranged combat uh, user. with Especially when I got a fast enough pistol where I was just boom, 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 boom. But I use some spells with mainly, again, just fireball as like 90% of the magic or more, really, like 99% of the magic I cast was probably fireball in that game um, and usually the AoE version of it. Uh, and so I just I didn't use very, any, very much magic physically. The, the swords, until I got the really good katana towards the end of Fable 2, I didn't. The swords are just really disappointing when when you can keep them ranged and you can just shoot them before they get to you. 
works so much better. And then, okay, now everybody's closed up. Now go swash some buckles and stuff. But uh, in Fable 3, I switch back and forth between all of them much more likely, usually. Um, so it, it, I like that it is this con the games are so similar in the combat. Melee, spell, ranged. Three buttons, control, just about everything most of the time. And holding it down charges up something. You block, you dodge, you, you roll. Very, very similar combat. But because of the different mechanics they have in each game, you end up playing them very, very differently. Or at least I did. You may end up playing exactly the same way the whole time. I don't know. Tell me. If you've played this game and you play a different way, let me know how you play it. And how your Fable 1, 2, 3 might have been different than mine. I don't... I've seen a couple people play Fable recently, which is part of what inspired me to play it. Uh, but mainly it was just my son playing it. Uh, got me wanting to play it again. But uh, I've seen a couple people play recently totally different play style. Like, I don't think I've seen a single person use multi-strike. And I don't understand it. <laughs> And I guess most of them are first-time players, so they may just not have discovered it. But it, it is interesting watching how other people play who are experiencing it for the first time and don't know what they're doing. But, I don't know. I didn't either when I first played it, so... You now have proof positive of your heroic status. And I believe Walter has made some progress with the mercenary problem. He is waiting for you outside the local tavern. All right, then. And as we walk back through here... More money! Four... Seven... Nine... Twelve... Fourteen... Sixteen... Nineteen... Didn't see how that one... Twenty-two plus whatever that one was, more gold than we had ten seconds ago. Yay. Let's go hit the pub. Speaking of getting a drink. Not really need to explore things. I can't afford to buy anything yet. I will be heading back to the dweller camp. Also, at some point... No one will give me any gold. Do I have a loot? Can I do this? A, X, and Y. Okay. I apparently just have a loot now. You've amassed enough money to buy a house. Houses are excellent investments. Besides, up. you'll need somewhere to live if you meet that special someone. I don't think it'll ever make a top ten. Quickly make some money early on. Obviously, it gets faster as you go. Easy to make a mistake. See how far I can go before I make one, though. Yeah, there we go. Jump the gun. My brain's like, oh, it's going to be this button. No, it wasn't, it wasn't that button. Okay, so that was some quick cash. Um, might actually be able to afford a real house now, and that's just a, a dweller. Um, I almost said van. They're not vans. Um, wagon. Excuse me, little kid. You ran into me. Don't you get mad at me, kid. That was totally your fault. Uh, let's see, there you are. 
You were successful then. Bloody marvelous. Yes, I was. Hey, look at even I have some information on the mercenaries Sabine mentioned. They're led by a man called Saker. He used to be a soldier, but always when he wants money from people, is it a sake down? His men are holed up in a small fortress in the mountains, so it won't be easy to get in. But I have a plan. So why did you go? Come with me. Just in case you didn't see the demon door. Can't miss it. Who's this now? Did you kill someone? One of the mercenaries. A cold-blooded killer. His name's Clarence, but everybody calls him Jimmy. He was he drinking just in can't the pub all the day, generally making life unpleasant for everyone. It wasn't hard to get him completely pickled. These young thugs. Bloody lightweight hmm, if you ask him me. him under the table. Anyway, Good on take you, Walter. his clothes and you'll have a free pass into their camp. Just try not to think about what those stains might be. It's nice that he's still breathing. Um... Yeah, apparently we're just gonna strip this dude down and change right mm. in front of Okay, You're no, we're just taking to his clothes. convince anyone without a bit of extra effort. Even these idiots will notice if you don't have his beard or tattoos. I'm sure you can get hold of what you need around town though. In the meantime, I'll find out who to talk to about getting food to the dwellers. They might not have much to spare here, but they're kind people. They'll just need a little convincing. Anyway, uh -huh. good luck dealing with Saker and his mercenaries. It'll be your first taste of real battle. But I know you'll do just fine. Did you weren't there well, for all the hollow men I just killed, Walter? The rather repulsive items you require to complete your mercenary disguise. A most impressive feat for a member of the royal family. And the opposite gender for beer. Should you have acquired a taste for labor, you may continue working for as long as you wish. I'm just, I'm still fresh off Fable 2. I want to. Marcus Ivy was the fourth oh. ruler to be named Marcus. However, he believed this fact diminished his importance, so he insisted that the letters after his name were merely an oddly spelled surname. No member of his court ever took issue with this, partly out of fear of reprisal and partly because. Well, how could you have that conversation and not have it be unbelievably awkward? Okay. I keep wanting to like, hey look, it's a dresser, it's a wardrobe. I want to open them and take things. But I can't. I also want to leap off of things. Not necessarily an option. Alright, let's go check out the demon door. I don't remember what this one is. I know we can't open it, but I don't remember what it is. I think it wants us to have a kid. I used to open myself to the world when it was different. Happy, prosperous, peaceful. But that world is gone. And today's is a tragic and horrible place. I find myself feeling protective. Sad. Closed off. Is there anything left that is not evil and corrupt or broken and miserable? Anyone who is still innocent, pure, happy. The sight of one such person no matter how small, would do so much for my spirits. I would open myself to the world again. Can I drag a child to you? I could swear that one, like, you had to have your own child. But, I don't know, maybe I can just drag a kid over to him. I'm going to try. After I take the treasure. Summon creature potion, which I will probably never actually use. Um. Hi there. How can I help? Hello. You. Will you hold my hand. I have a doll, and her name is Dolly. And I have a turtle. No, you and won't. His name is is just they live in my Let me whistle to you. The the you like a toy of you. Ooh, baby, up like, don't you? Yay! <laughs> Your hero pose. So I can convince you to hold hands with me and lead you over to that demon door. <laughs> uh, 
nope. Okay. Need any help today? Maybe you do need your, your own child. I don't think you can just lead random children around, which is probably a good thing. Weapon shop's open. Alright. So, cool thing is, you look at each one, you can check out what types of things you need to do to upgrade it and how in addition to how good is it that sort of thing so created to spray bullets in all directions the scatter shot properly used and maintained can be adapted to an impressive blunderbuss so hit enemies with 200 flourishes and a little bit extra damage kill 10 large enemies with flourishes you get shotgun spray 20 gifts to players over xbox well i'm not gonna be doing that one so that one's kind of a bust huh Holy Vengeance! The noble Marcus the Pure crafted this line of extraordinary pistols in his war against evil. He was forced to use one on himself after having impure thoughts one morning. Really? The dude had morning wood and shot himself? It's a rough way to wake up. So, increase your moral standing. Okay, simple enough. That's actually nice. Drag 10 criminals to jail. That'll be a side quest, you know, a, a job sort of thing like Fable 2 had for slave rescue and that sort of thing. You hunt down criminals criminals in town and drag them back to jail. And Avenger, kill 200 evil enemies. You get shotgun spray on a pistol. That's not bad. So, yeah, I mean, it's expensive for what I have now available. Troll Blight. As a, as a rule, I don't use hammers in this game. As I explained, I'm more of a sword versus hammer kind of gal. A set of weapons commissioned by Logan to exterminate every last troll from Albion. And is anyone traveling through the kingdom can testify the campaign was entirely successful. So what am I supposed to use it on, huh? Tell on 10 large enemies with flourishes. 150 enemies with an unweaved fireball spell. So that's what I have now is unweaved because it's just fireball, not combined with anything else woven. That's the weaving hand signal. And you add flame damage to it and guilds get wealth from evil expressions. Yeah, again, see, not my Slim Quick. Not enough gold for that. I know I don't have enough gold for that. Back off. The Slim Quick line of weapons has achieved notoriety for the counterintuitive way it allows users to lose weight by putting it on. Really? So you make yourself fatter, and then you lose weight with each hit. Spend 8,000 gold of my own, and then earn skilled seals faster, kill 150 ugly creatures. You know, beauty is in the eye of the beer holder, so ugly seems kind of subjective there. Yeah, so really only one of those has any real interest to me for right now, and it's quite expensive, so cost everything I have and more. Uh, let's see here. I don't know that there's a whole lot I really need to do at the moment. It's really just going to be progressing the quest again pretty soon. So I think next time I, I think I have to go head over to the what looks like the beautician there, that mirror up there for a bit of a facial hair change and then we probably have to find the tattoo somewhere I'm not sure but we'll figure it out so join me next time for the next installment of Fable 2 and the rest of the series obviously as we go forward please leave a like and subscribe for more content and I hope everybody's having a great day bye